it's time to begin with our opening song. So it's played by our beloved musician, Sheila Kaloran. Morning has come and the words are on the screen. So if you want to stay muted, but sing along, that's one of the ways we can still do something in unison. At the beginning of a Westwood service, whether in person or online, we pause to affirm that the land where we gather has borne witness to thousands of years of Indigenous history, culture and spirituality, and continues to do so. Edmonton is Treaty 6 territory and a traditional gathering place and home to diverse Indigenous peoples, including the Cree, Blackfoot, Métis, Nakota Sioux, Dene, Soto, Inuit, and many others. I encourage each of us to develop our own understanding of becoming a respectful ally and treaty person. Welcome to Westwood Unitarian, a compassionate community of free religious thought, inviting all people to rest, grow and serve the world. We are a community of individuals on unique spiritual journeys. We welcome all persons. Welcome to our online service. Now it's time for our shared chalice lighting. If you have a candle or a chalice nearby, it's time to bring it forward. These are words from Adrienne Marie Brown in the introduction to the book, Emergent Strategy. Wherever you are beginning this, take a deep breath and notice how you feel in your body and how the world around you feels. Take a breath for the day you have had so far and a breath for this precious moment, which cannot be recreated. Now another, for the day and night coming. Here you are in the cycle between the past and the future, choosing to spend your miraculous time in the exploration of how humans, especially those seeking to grow liberation and justice, can learn from the world around us how to best collaborate and how to shape change. So we light our shared chalices this morning in the spirit of growth and change. The lighting of candles of concern and celebration is a cherished tradition in many Unitarian Universalist congregations. It allows us to understand each other's worlds a little better, enabling us to share the joys of our lives and offer comfort to those with concerns. It helps us to be a true community. We don't have our physical candle tree right now, so instead you may share with the congregation your joy or concern in the chat box or you may choose to send your candles through our weekly email candle service.
please join me in the affirmation. May the light of these candles inspire us to use our power to heal and not to harm, to help and not to hinder, to serve the spirit of truth in loving affection and trusting hope. Westwood is a self-sustaining, self-funded community, and we welcome your contributions. A link to the donation to donation options is on the front page of our website, and you can see that information on the screen in front of you. At this time in the service, we like to express our appreciation by highlighting different programs and opportunities taking place within our community. Today, we are featuring Sarah McEwen, Westwood's Compassion Week. My name is Sarah, and I'm keen to tell you about a Westwood in-house program that is close to my heart. I'm one of many volunteers who work for Compassionate Connections at Westwood, and we strive to live out Westwood's purpose as a compassionate community of free religious thought, inviting all, including you, to rest, grow, and serve the world. My labor of love is coordinating Westwood's Compassion Bank, one that offers comfort and tangible to su support to folks going through tough times. Because don't we all need someone to notice and to care when times get rough? Like a listener, who can offer a friendly ear, or a nourisher who can offer meals, a transporter who can pick up and deliver goods and groceries, or accompany you to an appointment, and beyond pandemic, a visitor who may come to visit if you are confined at home, or in hospital, or a long-term care situation. We have handy helpers who can help out in the garden and in the house. We have a card crew who will send a compassionate note in times of family loss and a floral crew who will follow that up with a Westwood mug and a small flower offering of support. This program is sustained by our compassionate minister by our covenant of right relations, where we all strive to be our best with each other, and by those ever-present candles of care and concern, where we're encouraged to share our trials in tough times. All of this is an umbrella of our third Unitarian Universalist principle, justice, equity and compassion in human relations and it's my belief that if we begin in our spiritual home we can be more effective in the broader world of living out that principle you can find more information about this program at westwoodunitarian.ca our home page and clicking on programs or you can simply email Compassion at westwoodunitarian.ca. From you I receive, to you I give. Thank you to Lorian and to Sarah for creating that lovely video and it will very soon be featured on the Compassionate Connections and Compassion Bank page on our website. That time when you were small and tried so hard to help a butterfly emerge from its cocoon. 
I can still see the heartbreak in your eyes, that moment when you realized your helping was the reason that the bug would never fly. And the time when you would aid the baby bird stuck, you thought, in the sky blue egg. We couldn't know really if it would have had a chance, knocked from the nest, alone now in the grass. Maybe it was lost already. Maybe. A midwife told me once that being squeezed through the birth canal helps trigger baby's impulse to inhale. That being born cesarean can save a life or two, but still an intervention might be needed to replace that missing step. A message sent now from the nurse to the still unawakened lungs. Like a prisoner released from their bonds, simple enough it seems, there you go, you're free. But whose hands catch them? Remind them to breathe. Hold them lovingly, return them safely home. And animals caught in human tangles where help, help with the undoing might untie them, but still the injuries, the injuries go with them, defining what remains. We say that our dog Maisie can't be trusted, but the deeper truth is that once feral, suspicious still of children, she doesn't dare be tamed. How do we know the difference between a trap and transformation? The times that call for rescue or when the struggle is the path. We can't make emergence happen, but we can definitely get in its way. We can't force transformation, but we can shape spaces to invite it. We can't insist on change in another, but we can be change in another's proximity. We can't determine what will happen, but we can participate in the clearing of the path. When Avery first read from this book, Emergent Strategy, and it's the author you see featured in the screen share, Adrienne Marie Brown, Emergent Strategies, Shaping Change, and changing worlds. When Avery first read it from it during a workshop at Westwood, it interrupted something within me. That's what I look for now in my life. I look for interruptions, things that get in between the constant barrage of information that stop me in my tracks and make me pay attention. The readings that they read that day were simple descriptions of the wisdom of nature the ways that systems coexist and thrive, given as examples of the ways we can interrupt our patterns and return to some of the things we already know, but often get too busy to focus on. It was like a crash course in spiritual permaculture. It reunited me with some of my core beliefs, echoed in our Unitarian Universalist principles about how we are all interdependent, how nature is full of lessons, and that humans have become so accustomed to them that we ignore them at our peril, and that there is an inherent worth and dignity to all life forms. I stretched our first principle there a bit, but that's where I come from. This is not to say that we need to live in hives or dens, or that we must scavenge like magpies, but although that one kind of appeals to me. We don't have to copy another species wisdom but rather it calls us to awaken ours. It is to say that there is wisdom in systems, wisdom in remembering that any shift in a system, no matter how small, shifts the entire structure. Sometimes for the good and sometimes creating trauma or danger. Lori gave me my copy of Emergent Strategy for my birthday. And Avery and I started meeting for coffee, talking about what it might mean within our lives, and even more importantly, within our many overlapping communities. I wonder what is emerging in your life at this time? 
the author, Adrienne Marie Brown, is fascinated by the skills of good facilitation, and the book puts a lot of energy there. How do we gather? How do we lead? How do we build ties between people, and how do we effectively get work done? And the roots and wings are tied both to the natural world and to the works of Octavia Butler, known for her transformative science fiction writing that is really a study on human interaction. Brown writes that Octavia Butler, one of the cornerstones of my awareness of emergent strategy, spoke of the fatal fl human flaw as a combination of hierarchy and intelligence. We are brilliant at survival, but brutal at it. We tend to slip out of togetherness the way we slip out of the womb, bloody and messy and surprised to be alone, and clever, able to learn without whole bodies in the ways of this world. My hope is that this content will deepen and soften that intelligence such that we can align our behavior, our structures, and our movements with our visions of justice and liberation and give those of us co-creating the future more options for working with each other and embodying the things we fight for, dignity, collective power, love, generative conflict, and community. You have heard me speak about wanting to do an anti-racism book study and having chosen four books. This is the first one. And while organizing and race certainly come up in this book, it's not on the nose like the other three selections that follow. I'm beginning with emergent strategy because it's about a way of being, and it's about a way of being together across, it's about the necessity of being connected together across groups, between communities, human to human, and neighbor to neighbor. It's an invitation to help facilitate change by being partners with life, where we can bring our brains and our spirits, where we are called upon to be our awakened selves. In a polarized world, she speaks to me. In a threatened world, whether by disease or violence or climate change, whatever, the message holds. So rather than start with a book specifically about race, or a book specifically about justice. We're starting with a book by a woman who lives at the intersection of these issues of race and justice, who is imploring us to find our place within the story, wherever we fit best and is most appropriate and to help bring about positive change. Here are her words from the introduction to the book. The world is full of beauty, magic, miracles, and patterns that induce wonder. You are basically holding a book of me saying, wow, everything's so amazing. Or, that's not wow. Why not go with the wow option? Emergence is one of the best concepts I have learned for discussing this wow, this wonder. And then there's a quote by Nick Obolensky that says, Emergence is the way complex systems and patterns arise out of a multiplicity of relatively simple interactions. It's another way of speaking about the connective tissue of all that exists, the way, the Tao, the force, change, God, goddess, life. Birds flocking, cells splitting, fungi whispering underground. Emergence emphasizes critical connections over critical mass, building authentic relationships, listening with all the senses of the body and the mind. With our human gift of reasoning, we have tried to control or overcome the emergent processes that are our own nature, the processes of the planet we live in on and the universe we call home. The result is crisis at each scale we are aware of, from our deepest inner moral sensibilities to the collective scale of climate and planetary health and beyond, to our species in relation to space and time. The crisis is everywhere, massive, 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 and we are small. But emergence notices the way small actions and connections create complex systems patterns that become ecosystems and societies. 
Emergence is our inheritance as a part of this universe. At, it is how we change. Emergent strategy is how we intentionally change in ways that grow our capacity to embody the just and liberated worlds we long for. I could go on all day, but I'd rather you read the book. What I'm hoping for is some people who want to dive deep into a conversation. We'll start with a single session, but this isn't a, just a, I'll give it seven out of 10 kind of book. So the first session will be a more typical book group, two hours where we discuss our thoughts and reflections. People can share passages that spoke to them and we identify some of the ways this work intersects with our communities and our lives. Following that, for anyone who is interested, we'll take a deeper dive. There is a study guide in the book and fabulous questions. There are self-assessments to take, I'll read you one later, that can also be used to reflect on ourselves and our communities. Emergent strategy is a tool. It's a collection of tools, really, and it's helped me to find comfort in this incredibly discomforting time. And it has reminded me that I am human, which really helps a lot. But it's also a method that we can use moving forward with the books that follow, a lens, if you will, to view them through. So if you're interested, let me know and I'll add you to the doodle poll so we can find a date for that first gathering. The doodle poll will go out next week. And then we'll announce the date. So if you decide at the last minute you wanna pop in, you're always welcome. Anyone is welcome, even if you haven't read the book and you just want to learn from other people's experience. Come for one session and check it out. If you want to join us for a deeper dive, that option will follow, but it's not required. And if you're not interested, it's okay. No pressure. What matters to me most is that the ideas under underpinning both our principles and this work have life. So much of our time, we're learning about ideas and cultures, but we're separated from them in real time. But there's no place where we are not all interdependent and not all impacted by the issues. Spruce the Squirrel did a wonderful story about emergence on October the 3rd. You can find it on Facebook. Spruce puzzles out what emergence means. Spruce really struggles with what emergence means and invites your contributions. And you can see that some of our Westwood friends have responded to Spruce's questions. Your, your ideas are also welcome. Goldie the corn snake makes an appearance and talks about shedding her skin as she grows and helps Spruce see that emerging from hibernation is an emergence. Throughout my life, there have been so many times when I can look at back and say, wow, if you had told me five years ago that I would be here in this moment, I would have said, you must be kidding. I never imagined that I would eventually go to hairdressing school as a young mom, or that I would travel across Canada in a converted bus with a whole crowd of humans, or that I would end up being a Unitarian Universalist minister. Today, I can hardly believe that I'm on a podcast with one of my very favorite humans. I wonder what is emerging in your life at this time? My work is about finding ways to be together and to be healthy and well. And because we all make mistakes, I know I make a lot of them, especially when the pressure is on, like at this time. Then it's also about how to reconnect when we get separated or when relationships feel broken. How to bridge differences, because without that, we're working at cross purposes. And how to help people find their way in life in ways that they can be connected to their inner selves, their outer world, and all that moves between the two. And more and more, my work is about learning the differences between a trap and a transformation. When is it our work 
to create, help create freedom? And when is it our work to be a support to someone who needs to free their own self? And free their self quite possibly from systems that we live solidly in the midst of. What is the work that only we can do? What are the gifts that we have to offer into the mix? Emergent strategy helps us with that discernment. Here are just a few of Brown's invitations to open up your own reflection. This is her assessment quickie, a quick tool for measuring your embodiment of emergent strategy at this moment. Do you value small scale growth and change? Do you adapt easily to new circumstances? Wow, we can all answer that one because we've got lots of practice these days. Are you comfortable with nonlinear growth and transformation? Do you experience conflict as a generative force within your life and work? Are you in community or in relationship with people who can and do hold you accountable? Do you see change as an opportunity? Do you see yourself as a part of the natural world? Change is constant. And in a pandemic world, change seems to have sped up exponentially. Octavia Butler wrote, all that you touch, you change. All that you change, changes you. The only lasting truth is change. God is change. How we learn to navigate change, that also changes everything. Humans have a tendency to draw in when change comes to their doorstep, to pull back to center, to be careful. That's wise. And we can't always stay there because the world around us will change and we won't know where we belong anymore. Another risk in changing times is that people are more divided, polarized, identifying who is safe and who poses a danger. And this is a protective action, a defensive move, also wise. And it can be divisive by amplifying the differences and the divisions. Lao Tzu writes in the Tao Te Ching, if you do not trust the people, they will become untrustworthy. Brown replies, one of the primary principles of emergent strategy is trusting the people. The flip of Lao Tzu's wisdom is if you trust the people, they become trustworthy. Trust is a seed that grows with attention and space. How we choose to face the world also shapes how the world responds to us. I know that sounds simplistic. And sometimes the simplest things can be true. We're going to take just a moment to listen to our opening words once again, and I invite you to really do what they say. Then when we're done, we will sing a centering song together and I'll come back to close this part of the service. I invite you to lay down your thoughts and concerns, take a centering breath, and here we go. Wherever you are beginning this, take a deep breath and notice how you feel in your body and how the world feels around you. Take a breath for the day you have had so far. And a breath for this precious moment which cannot be recreated. Now another for the day and the night coming. Here you are in the cycle between the past and the future, choosing to spend your miraculous time in the exploration of how humans, especially those seeking to grow liberation and justice, can learn from the world around us how to best collaborate and how to shape change.
wonder what is emerging in your life at this time. Each of us is called to do the work that we are best situated for. To close, I leave you with five of the core principles of emergent strategy. There are more. This is just an invitation in. The last one is my favorite. Change is constant. There is always enough time for the right work. Less prep, more presence. What you pay attention to grows. There is a conversation in the room that only these people at this moment can have. Find it. Blessed be and amen. Now I invite you to bring your candle or chalice forward again. These are our chalice extinguishing words. I'm returning to words we've used at the beginning of the pandemic when we first were in separate spaces. We know that it is not our buildings that bind us together. It is not just our physical spaces, it is our love. It is the connections we forge and maintain to one another as we find our places within the interdependent web. This may not be ideal, but we are together, home each to the other. May you carry that seed within you in the coming days, knowing that you are always welcome here, face to face, heart to heart, and love to love. Please join us in singing along with Sheila.